I want all self-defenders to hear me on this one. Compliance needs to be a tool in your toolbox. Thanks for joining us on today's active self-protection lesson. I'm your host, John Correa. Today's video comes to us from Puerto Rico. KMS Squared makes the ultimate lighting for your reloading press. Their innovative design increases safety and makes your reloading more efficient. Please thank them for sponsoring today's video. Late at night and this dude's just walking out towards his truck, smoking a cigarette, and when he gets to the truck, you're gonna see the car behind him. It's gonna be like a clown car at the circus. A bunch of dudes are gonna jump out and rob this guy. And you can see his body language, he's quite defeated. Notice that there is a close guy that's kind of controlling him physically and a farther guy that actually has a gun on him. And actually, if you pay attention, another dude is gonna jump out of the car here. So it's three on one. And our victim gives them absolutely nothing, you know, that, that says, hey, I'm a danger or anything like that. They actually put him on the hood of the car here and start frisking him down. And the little bit of information that I have from the links in the description said that they actually took his cell phone here. They grabbed his wallet as well. And they're gonna steal his pickup truck, which sucks. So these guys are gonna shake him down and notice that the guy with the gun is keeping a pretty significant distance as they shake this guy down and he's got two close guys and one farther guy. I'm gonna just speed it up simply for the sake of time here as they're gonna get in his car and try to figure out how to start his car apparently. Again, as the guy with the gun keeps a significant distance from him, then they're gonna get back in their car. Our good guy is gonna walk off and just not be in the middle of it. They're gonna take his car and that's where this one ends. I think this outcome sucks, but I do think that we need to have this as a part of our toolkit to know that compliance can be an option. If you wanna support the work that we do here at Active Self Protection, one of the ways you can do that is by joining right here on YouTube as a channel member. Hit that link to join. We do some meet and greets at NRA annual meetings and other events. We do special stuff for our channel members on the Cover Your Ask Tour. So joining support helps me pay the staff and keep the lessons coming every day. All right, let's get to some lessons. Okay, significant lessons here. You've got to know your environment. Late night, Puerto Rico suburbs, specifically San Juan, can be very, very dangerous. And I want you to recognize that paying attention to your environment is so critically important to surviving violent crime. This guy, I, I can't tell because you know of the, the quality of the video, but I don't know if he was able to see inside those windows just because of the shadows that we see, he could have seen something else. But if you're paying attention and there's three dudes sitting in a car that's next to you, walk the other way as fast as you can. But notice he's turned away from them. He's not paying attention to his surroundings. That gave them an opportunity to get inside his OODA loop and jump him. And that is a bad thing. So pay attention to your world. Also late at night, rules of stupids do apply. Now, when these guys jump out, his first inclination here is, hey man, I don't wanna cause any problems. And I think that was a good thing. Sometimes compliance is the right answer. These guys have the drop on him big time. They've got him isolated and alone. There's nobody else around. They have a grab man who's on top of him and a gun man who is at distance who he can't get his hand on the gun. You gotta wait your turn and that turn might never come. And so you've just gotta learn to use compliance purposefully in order to protect yourself. Now, he does a pretty good job of that here. Now, starting January 1st this year, Puerto Ricans can carry concealed firearms. So if he is at this point, now not when this incident happened, but if he was gonna go and look for an opportunity to protect himself, probably right about here before that third guy walks up is his best bet. He can conceal a draw if he was carrying appendix right here or strong side if he's right-handed and go to work on these guys. Now he's gonna to have to recognize if he does that, he is in a major deficit. He'd probably wanna put two shots or, or a couple of three on the guy who's very, very close to him, move hard to his right, and then start worrying about the guy with a gun and then see what happens. Now I'm not saying that was the right answer here. Compliance in this case, he wasn't hurt. He had to pay, I'm sure, an insurance deductible on his car. I hope he had full coverage insurance on his car. And, and the compliance worked okay for him. I'm just saying for those of us who conceal carry, there were opportunities for him to do that, but that those are over now. Once they got him over the car like this and they're shaking him down, if he had had a gun, they'd have pulled that gun off him and he would have had to just hope for the best. Now, in some localities, if they find out you have a gun on you, they're gonna murder you for that gun. So if you recognize that, dude, I can't, I can't have them find out I got a gun, I gotta get it out and use it. Sometimes you just gotta fight the fight no matter where the fight is and no matter what the odds are. But this guy does an okay job here. He just lets them have what they want. Okay, man, I'm not giving you any problems, whatever. I do think it's kind of funny he never dropped his cigarette here until about this spot here where you're gonna see him finally drop his smoke right there. But 
He's not offering him resistance because of the danger. Your life is worth more than your car by a big deal. Final thing I think he did really well here is that as soon as they weren't actively keeping him there, he bounced. He got the heck out of the danger zone. And I do think that was a wise thing that just because you're compliant doesn't mean you have to stand there and watch them take your stuff. That would have probably put him in more danger. Instead, he did the right thing and got the heck out of there. So we got a bunch of lessons out of this one. Let's pay attention to our world. Let's use compliance purposefully, even if we're concealed carrying. Let's take our opportunity if it presents itself and our skills are strong enough, get out of the danger zone as fast as we can to cover our ASP.